In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to return your 3D printer back to Marlin firmware. This series is sponsored by PCBWay. Many of us are updating the firmware on our 3D printers to gain the advantages from something like Clipper firmware, which is controlled by a separate device. However, there may come a time where you want to revert back to the Marlin firmware that your 3D printer came with. There can be many different reasons why you might want to return your printer to Marlin firmware. You might be selling your printer without wanting to sell the additional Clipper device with it, or you may have had problems with a Clipper setup, or you may just prefer the way that Marlin runs. Whatever the reason, I'm going to show you what you need to do. The printer that I'm going to demonstrate on is my Ender 3 version 2, which has been running on Clipper for more than a year. I've had no problems running Clipper on this printer, and in all honesty, I'll probably switch it back to Clipper as soon as we're done. However, for the purpose of this video, it's going back to Marlin. The very first thing we need to do is find the correct firmware for your 3D printer and control board. If you don't know what control board your 3D printer has, then you need to get access to it so that you can see what's written on it. My Ender 3 has a 4.2.2 board and an STM32 F103 RET6 chip. Now that I have all of this information, it's time to find Marlin firmware. Now for this particular printer, there are a few options. You could go to the manufacturer Creality's website and download their latest firmware, or you could use one of the more popular community developed firmware like Gyres that I had before going to Clipper, or the professional firmware, which I've never used, but have often had recommended to me. As I've never tried it, I'm going to use the professional firmware because why not? There is a GitHub page for this firmware and pre-compiled binary or .bin files at the bottom. As I said, my control board is a 4.2.2 and I'm also running ABL Touch, so I can download the correct firmware for my particular setup. And then just as we did when we changed our firmware away from the standard Marlin firmware, we just put that .bin file onto a formatted SD card. Once that's done, we can then insert that SD card into the printer. Now, I really hope that you're not reverting to Marlin firmware to sell your 3D printer and leave the hobby. But if you are, don't forget that there are other ways to source 3D printed parts. PCBWay, our series sponsor, now offer a full 3D printing service for anything you might need. PCBWay don't just have hobby machines either. They offer 3D printing in materials from PLA all the way to high strength metals. And getting a quote couldn't be quicker or easier too. Just upload an STL and tell them how many you want, and then you'll get an instant ballpark quote that then gets refined by an engineer soon after. So for anything 3D printing that you can't do yourself, try PCBWay. Now, back to the video. If, like me, you're reverting to Marlin from a clipper setup, then at this stage you're going to need to find your 3D printer's display and reattach it. With your screen connected and your SD card inserted, turn on your printer and then wait for the firmware to update. This process may be a little different depending on your printer or control board, but a Google search will probably be the best way to find out if there's anything different that you need to do. Sometimes the firmware has to go in a folder and sometimes you need to rename the file to something specific. And sometimes you just need to change the file to anything that's different from what has been installed before, even if it's the exact same firmware. Either way, in most cases, that's all you need to do. Once you're back on Marlin firmware, it's a good idea to run through all of the calibration processes that can be done with your firmware, or at the very least, reset everything to default settings. None of the clipper settings will have been retained, so you're now pretty much back to how your printer came out of the box. And now you know how to switch back to Marlin firmware should you ever want to. If you're switching back to Marlin firmware because your Clipper installation didn't go well and you haven't seen my Clipper installation guides, then click here and see if you might want to give it one last try before giving up. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.